start with the first question, what made you interested in this topic and what compelled you to write these books? Well, I always had an interest in science fiction and started out academically with researching the military industrial complex. And then I got into autonomous weapon systems. Uh, so the robots, uh, the killer robots. And out of that grew an interest in directed energy weapons and also brain computer interfaces. That is kind of related to the discussion of autonomous weapons, mm -hmm. uh, because the idea is that you could pair uh, uh, humans and weapon systems so that you have thought controlled weaponry. Mm -hmm. And that could be a, a way of um, having a a combination of the high cognitive abilities of humans and the speed and precision of machines. Uh, so that is one of the potential solutions to the problem of killer robots. Mm -hmm. and, and I saw that there was a gap in the literature in terms of military neuroscience. Uh, there was a lot going on in the early 2000s. And I was kind of stumbling across it. And I saw Jonathan Moreno's book. And I got very interested in the topic. And obviously, I came across a lot of mind control literature as well. Mm -hmm. And I've heard about uh, people getting targeted with directed energy weapons. And that made me very curious about what could be the potential reality of this uh, and these claims. Uh, so uh, I spent a couple of years uh, writing that book on mm -hmm. military neuroscience. And I, I think it's an important area that mm -hmm. uh, requires further research. So what do you really see as the gap that wasn't addressed? Well, I think the literature was very much focused on things like human enhancement, so the positive mm -hmm. side of things. So how we can build super soldiers, how we can uh, improve uh, soldier performance, and how we can combine uh, humans with machines. Mm -hmm. And that was the less controversial aspect of it. And I think that the big gap here was the degradation side. Mm -hmm. So you can not only use the technology for improving human performance, but also for degrading human performance. So you can use it offensively. Mm -hmm. And that is has been called non-lethal weapons or less lethal weapons. And it also goes into other areas uh, such as propaganda, psychological warfare, uh, and those kinds of things. And I think there wasn't really much literature. I, I think there's still not very much literature on that. And at the same time, I believe uh, <laughs> it's already operationally used. Uh, so it's no longer science fiction. Mm -hmm. It has moved to the battlefield, so to speak. 